IT, sharing the African experience. Hello and thanks for staying with us. I am Chinenye Anokuru with AIT Reports. A member of Nigeria's House of Representatives, Samuel Onibo, has called on the executive arm of government and security agencies responsible for the fight against corruption to always allow the rule of law to prevail in the struggle to eliminate financial and economic crimes. At the media forum in Abuja at the weekend, Onibo, while assessing the challenges confronting the fight against corruption, applauded the judiciary for its courage in resisting imposition of injustice in the trial of some cases. He insisted that the anti-corruption fight will be meaningless without the observance of the rule of law and separation of powers. To ensure that the, the arms of government are allowed to function, to perform their functions, uh, if that doesn't happen, then you have a challenge, you have an attitude in the system. That's, that's the point I am making. So it is from that angle that, uh, you know, in a system where there are allegations of corruption and maybe the fractures of the law, of course, naturally, you expect the government to go ahead and try to check that. But while you are doing that, you have to follow procedure, so they don't create doubts in the minds of people. who is the chairman of the House of Representatives Committee on Climate Change, said the committee is already fashioning out a legislative agenda to address challenges of climate change. But from what we have in the bill on climate change that has passed second reading in the House of Representatives, we are cautious about this and we are doing something about it. And it is believed that once the bill is passed, it becomes law. He therefore restated the need for MDAs to make adequate budgetary provisions to back up climate change commitments with practical and verifiable actions. As the war on corruption rages on in the country, the Nigerian judiciary has come under fire for not doing enough to support the anti-corruption agencies towards curbing the menace. The chairman of the Presidential Committee on Corruption, Itse Sagay, made the accusation at an event held recently in Abuja. Since the inception of the Buhari administration, there have been divergent views about the style employed by the president in his anti-corruption campaign. Why some believe it is selective and targeted at political opponents, others of the opinion that any approach used to fight the menace is sacrosanct. Ise Sage is among those who share this school of thought. The senior advocate of Nigerian believes that for corruption to be eradicated in the country, drastic measures must be taken by the government. The FCC and the police must monitor and investigate the activities of lawyers who receive a share of the proceeds of crime as their fees. Because that's what's happening now. You steal 20 billion, senior advocate defends you, collects 2 billion as his own share. So he has an interest in your being corrupt and in sustaining corruption in the country forever. Sage is angry that the judiciary is not doing enough to help the anti corruption war. He labasted the third year of government for frustrating the president's efforts by giving soft landing to corrupt individuals and politicians. He expressed disappointment with the National Judicial Council's decision to recall judges on corrupt charges without carrying out proper investigation. I do not know if Nigeria has yet got to the stage in which a judge will be able to jail another judge as required by the law without feeling a tinge of esprit de corps. Throw into this mix the nature of the presidential system we pretend to run. Can the presidency really fight and win anti-corruption war without the cooperation of the legislature and the judiciary? The professor advised the National Assembly to concentrate on lawmaking and allow the executive carry out their functions. Uh, I think the professor was drawing his own inference from the uh, acting president's own comment a couple of days back and also just opposing it with the comment of the speaker and the that of the Senate president. So I would say the executive are putting in the same section, 
the National Assembly are putting the same section on. So what is left for us? I think that issue needs to be clarified. And who has that to do that? The judiciary. With the setbacks offered by the anti-corruption war in recent times, many agree that a fresh initiative can be adopted to convince those for and against the present administration's approach to the campaign that the government means well to return the country to the right possessor to economic, industrial and political emancipation. Eva Rehor, Dr. Bessie, AIT News, Abuja. The Department of State Service says it will stop at nothing to arrest a deal with and deal with any group of persons promoting this unity and fanning the embers of disaffection in the country. In a statement signed by the service spokesman, Tony Obuyo, the service says the warning is coming on the heels of the threat by a coalition of northern youth that Igbo in the north should relocate and a similar one by the Niger Delta watchdog equally asking northerners in the south-south to quit. The DSS frowns at such statements, describing them as running against the spirit of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which guarantees freedom of any citizen to live in any part of the country without fear of molestation. The state service insists that the hate speeches are being used by ethnic chauvinists to misinform and subvert the efforts of government in implementing good development for the overall well-being of everyone. The statement adds that the Department of State Service has already commenced investigation into unmasking the sponsors and proponents of the hate speeches in order to bring them to book in a very short time. Nigeria's acting president Yemi Oshibajo says the ultimatum given to the Igbos by the Ariwa youth and the agitation for the sovereign state of Biafra are in violation of the Nigerian constitution. Professor Oshibajo, who said this at a meeting with chairman of the Council of Traditional Rulers from the Southeast Zone, noted that Section 2 of the Nigerian constitution states that the country is one indivisible state. I want to repeat that, that both agitations, both the agitations for secession and the, and, and the uh, ultimatum to leave the northern states are both wrong and a violation of our constitution. They are unlawful and a violation of our constitution. Our constitution says in section 2 that Nigeria is one indivisible and indissoluble sovereign state to be known by the name the Federal Republic of Nigeria, end of quote. That is the law of our country. And let us not be in any doubt about the fact that the federal government of Nigeria is committed to ensuring that our country remains united. And that anyone who uh, violates the law in a manner such as we are seeing all over the place will be met with the full force of the acting president insisted that the greatness of Nigeria is in working together despite the obvious differences, adding that the only way to make anything right is by doing it right. Professor Shibajo will also meet with traditional rulers from the north on Monday, June 19. The Nigerian Guild of Editors has condemned hate speeches from different sections of the country and called for restraint and tolerance among Nigerians that the country remains stronger together. At the end of its second quarterly meeting in Lagos at the weekend, the Guild noted that those sowing seeds of discord should realize that they are not just destroying the dreams of the nation's founding fathers, but the progress made over the years as a nation. The Guild also urged Nigerians to ignore those agitating for the dismemberment of the country and to go about their businesses without fear or favor and focus more on rep repositioning the country for present and future generations. While appreciating the firm and decisive intervention of the acting president to calm the situation, the Guild urged the government to do more, even as it expressed worries that the police are yet to arrest those behind the Igbo quit notice. A communique signed by the Guild's President Funke Egbemode and the Secretary General Victoria Ibanga, however, commended the Nigerian police for the arrest of the kidnap 
kidnap kingpin Onwa Madike, Chukudi Dumeme, and other kidnappers who abducted pupils of Bonla Model College Ebe in Lagos State. The Guild Equality condemned the overzealousness of operatives of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, and other security agencies against the Nigerian media. The Advanced People's Democratic Alliance, ABDA, says it is committed to providing alternative governance that will strengthen the corporate existence of Nigeria and give the citizenry the desired justice and equity, the yen for. Interim National Chairman of the party, Malam Kabiru Shitu, made this known to newsmen after the party was presented with certificate of registration by the Independent National Electoral Commission in Abuja. Malam Shitu said with the certificate, the party has been empowered to deliver on its promises as enshrined in its manifesto. The interim national chairman also called on Nigerians to key into the new vision that Abda has come with and experience true leadership devoid of impunity and deceit adding that the doors of the party are open for anyone who wish to join the trail. The idea is here to change Nigerian for good, to put food in the table of Nigerian, and we have brought this innovation. We are going to look at comparative advantage in each state and urge all those states to, to capitalize on, on that. That is how open we want to be. That is the part we want to give to Nigerian. Where for you to be a president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, you must go back to your own ward and start the election from your ward. Your ward must vote for you in our primary. You must go into local government. You, if you get the nod of your local government, you go back to the state. And then you come to the national election. And we are making an electoral process very cheap in a way that you don't need to take people to Abuja. Because it's electronically, you can be in your bedroom and vote the president or the governor or the house of representative or even the ward councillor that you want. This is what we are bringing to the table of Nigeria. So if whoever accepts this, our norms, is our friend. We are welcoming them, being a governor, being a minister, being a president, even the president, president or vice president. I think they know this is a new innovation. We are waiting when we are ready for them. Welcome them if they have something to give to Nigeria. The party assured Nigerians that in spite of the overwhelming economic and political challenges facing the country, it is set to reposition the nation on the path of prosperity. You're still watching AIT reports. We now join our Lagos studios where Eno Abanuma is standing by with more stories. Do stay with us. Many thanks to you. Hello and welcome to Lagos. A leader of the National Democratic Coalition, Ayo Okbadukun, has challenged a former chief security officer to late uh, military leader, Sani Abacha, to produce the video recording containing how members of the coalition were allegedly bribed by the military uh, government for fa or face a libel charge. Okbadukun, while speaking to journalists in Lagos, said most of us allegation that leaders of Nadeko were compromised after visiting former military leader Abdul Salami Abubakar during the June 12th struggle in 1998 is outright falsehood. On its 24th anniversary, the June 12, 1993 election, Nigeria's freest exercise, is still a very hot topic. Interesting accounts are emerging on the roles played by different groups and individuals in the struggle to actualize Chief MK Wapiola's mandate. One of such is the allegation from a former chief security officer to the late General Sani Abacha, Amza al-Mustafa, that leaders of the National Democratic Coalition at Deco, a group that was actively involved in the struggle to regain the June term mandate, were compromised at a point during the struggle. Here is Mr. Ayokpadukun, the general secretary of the group, stating what he knows. When we were invited, the agenda was set
apologize for the loss in transmission from our Lagos studios. The Ministry of Health has launched a six-month national tobacco control communications to raise awareness on the provisions of National Tobacco Control Act and the dangers of tobacco smoke. Minister of Health Isaac Adewale says tobacco-free Nigeria will leverage on social media and offline interactions to reach young Nigerians, especially second-hand smokers, on the ban of tobacco smoking in public places. Heart, lung, diabetes, cancer, and death. So it is one of the major sources of affliction. And our effort today is to say, look, we must end this madness. Let us not be deceived by those who tell us, oh, we are creating jobs, we are creating wealth, we are creating prosperity. To me, it is poison arrow. Wrong message. Deceiving us so that we get into it, get addicted because it is addictive, and then we are hooked. Once we are hooked, it becomes difficult to get out of it. You can ask those who have been smoking to get out of their meat is a major challenge. The World Health Organization estimates that tobacco use is currently responsible for the death of about 6 million people annually across the world, with 80% of these deaths occurring in low- and middle-income countries like Nigeria. The Ministry of Health also announced the appointment of Nigerian music superstars Timida Kolo and Oluwa Tosin Ajibade, popularly known as Easy, as well as a young influential leader, Ms. Sada to Hamu Aliyu, to leverage on their influence with the young Nigerians. you watching AIT Reports. We'll bring you more stories after this break. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us. The need for the church to play a role in motivating parents and guardians to ensure the proper upbringing of their children and words has again been stressed. This formed the central theme of a sermon delivered at this year's Father's Day celebration service at the Four Square Gospel Church at Sokoro, Abuja. It is a common belief in most parts of the world that children grow more attached to their mothers than their fathers. Over the years, this notion has been a source of debate between the parents. Both opinion polls support mothers in this regard. Even in the midst of this, there are many children who still have strong bond with their fathers. This year's Father's Day celebration was used by the clergy to reawaken the consciousness of fathers to their roles and responsibilities in fostering cordial relationship with their children. If a man does not know what his responsibilities are, it will be very, very difficult for the wife to be able to design the responsibility of the home. And the man is the one that ought to direct his entire household. So today, it's a significance that fathers must pick up the pieces of their responsibilities and ensure that they lead their family into the way of the Lord. If we take a census, like I said, of Africa, you discover that most of us talk more about our mothers. 80 to 90 percent of Africans will tell you I was raised by my mother. And that is not the arrangement of God. God is a father. He expects us as men to be fathers in this. And we should not renege on our, on our responsibility and our promise to raise a child that it will live after God. Pastor Olowo Dola church fathers who create time for their families. As this will help the children imbibe societal values and strong social vices. When you see our, our dear country, the failure of Nigeria is the failure of the fathers. The fathers have failed their children. The fathers are living a life that is inconsistent with the values that we have always known. It's the appropriate place to start is with the father. Build up a good relationship with God. 
you know, take instructions at his feet, follow the instructions that he gives, and uh, you'll be fine. He stressed that the absence of fatherly care in most homes had led to the unimaginable damages in the lives of many children. If the father is upright with his name, every other person within the family follows. If a father loves the Lord, if a father fears the Lord, he will obey the statute. It is the expectation of the church that fathers lay good examples for their children and help nurture them as the next generation of leaders for the country. Iwan Reho, Dr. Bessi, AIT News, Abuja. Well, as the world marks the 2017 Father's Day, the Primate Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion and other clergymen are worried that ethnic and religious sentiments are being allowed to threaten the unity of the Nigerian nation. The clergymen